Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tech Connect Podcast. I'm John Martin. I'm Dean Reverman. I'm Sam Hughes. And behind the mic... I'm Mark... Oh. <laughs> I'm Mark... Do, do we oh. take another take of that or just run from here? Because that can be part of the charm here, too. Do it live! All right. We're just going to run with it. I don't we're care. With it. It's it's our end of the year episode. We're we having never fun. We never go back. We never, we never go back. back. We no. never read it. We don't care. We don't care. We're just uh, moving on. As we've done, this is now the fourth year we've done this. It, are you serious our, right now? Our annual Star Wars episode. Wow. And this all started just because Dean indulged me yes. the first year. It was like, yeah. hey, we should do a Star Wars episode. Yes. I'm like, uh, yes, please. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm Say sure less. that's not the way it went down. Say less. You probably said something like, I'd love to do a Star Wars episode someday. I didn't put it on the table. I can guarantee you well, that. Either way, you... <laughs> One way or another, you gave your tacit permission yes. or implied permission. Still the confidence. <laughs> exactly. So I felt the need to do it, uh, and now it's become an annual tradition that we Love talk. It. We sit here and we spend an hour plus just talking about what's going on in the world of Star Wars. I didn't say Star Trek at any point, did I? No. Mm-mm. Oh, I, I felt like so. I maybe accidentally did because I don't want to. I don't want to make people mad. I mean, I'm someone who loves both. Well, yes, but of course. There right. are some folks. There are some corners of the Star Wars internet out there that will just burn you to the ground if you suggest that they're in any way equal so hey our audience is a bunch of you know uh folks that like to get nerdy and things of that nature and this is perfect right yeah there you go just feeding the audience is all we're doing so as always we're gonna we're gonna talk about some news in the world of star wars what's what's happening what's upcoming what Mm -hmm. we are expectations for things we're gonna talk about some of the various series that released Mm -hmm. this year Mm -hmm. including the new visions the new bad batch Mandalorian season three will probably be the biggest part of our discussion as well as Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Sam and I will do a little maybe appreciation for the Rebels series because both of us have actually watched that entire series. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot. You guys go deep. Got a lot of time on my hands. You go deep. We we do, (laughs) yes. time on your hands? Uh, <laughs> plus, we'll spend a little time talking about what some of the coolest uh, weaponry I in like Star this Wars yes. is, and yes. give some spicy takes Ooh, spice. on Star Wars. Spicy yeah. takes. Um, <clears throat> all right, I'm going to bust out my best Yoda here. Mm. Podcast this is you are looking for. Mm. Plug in, you must, and get connected. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to the Tech Connect Podcast. It's time to get connected. All right, let's get into it, guys. We've got a lot to talk about. Uh, we're going to start with some some news here of, of what happened in the world of Star Wars yes. this year. And I wanted there to kick off with... There was a lot of news, I feel this, like. Yeah, this is one of those things I think you tried to maybe bring up as a tech connecting at some point or talked about maybe doing it yes. earlier in the year. It's like, no, yeah. we got to save this for the, oh, the yeah. finale right, of right, the right, season, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is the Galactic Star Cruiser yes. shutting down. Now, for anybody who doesn't know what this is, this was Disney World's attempt to make a themed hotel. Yes. For Star Wars, mm-hmm. uh, where, you know, basically you you go inside of this building and you're now in this immersive experience where all the windows just look out on like a star field and ships, you know, you even the word immersive, I don't feel like brings <laughs> enough gravity to what oh, they yeah. tried to pull. Like you're literally here. for you're a couple in, days there. living in the world of yes, Star Wars. Yes. Uh, and and then I think at some point you do an excursion out to Galaxy's Edge in the mm-hmm. park or whatever where they actually mm-hmm. had to go and spend some time out of the park, you know. And but otherwise it was this again very immersive experience. Characters are all dressed up. They encourage people to dress up as well. Yep. You're given assignments of things to do to help out with a, <laughs> a battle between the Resistance and the uh, the First Order. But what was a big problem for a lot of folks was the price tag mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for two people forty eight hundred dollars. A family of four would cost about six thousand. There's a budget deal in there. For, somewhere, isn't it quote. per night? Uh, no, I think that was for two, two nights, nights. I believe I think that was a two for the night, whole yeah. experience. <laughs> Even so, do some math. Oh, that doesn't take the pain away. Any no. I mean, you can go. Yeah. You can go to Disney World for an entire week for yeah. and two? spend about that, maybe yeah. if yeah. not less. Yeah. You know, honestly, yeah. but for mm-hmm. just two nights in this theme hotel, yeah. and it didn't include tickets to the parks. To the parks, just I think, the like hotel. you got to go to. I said you had to go to Galaxy's Edge and hang out there, but it wasn't, you know, tickets to all the Disney parks or anything like that. Yeah. So basically that was considered as one of the big problems. And Mm -hmm. and some people noted in the article that I that I found about this too, that it was also one of those things where because the experience had a very 
finite storyline to it, mm. it didn't really encourage people to come back. Ah, so it was a one-time deal. Yeah, it's basically I once see. you've done it once, I mean, you get a random assignment of what you do, but the story, the overall see, story doesn't really change. this from the beginning. Flawed. I don't know. It costs, so apparently it costs $350 million to do this. And supposedly, wow. they, Disney's not officially saying this, but rumor has they've taken a $250 million loss mm. on this oh as God. they've shut it down. Because it's only been open for, what, maybe three years? Mm. Something like that? Yeah. It's, it seemed like that it, long. Great. The pandemic didn't help. Like, they opened, I think, just before the pandemic, so that caused some issues. Mm. But even then, it was a very, you know... Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was like I said, it was a finite experience. Mm-hmm. It was a very expensive experience. Mm-hmm. Something I would have loved to have done yeah. was never going to pay this kind of money that's to a, do it. That's a bummer that they wouldn't change anything up because I feel like that's just the great thing about Disney World in general is that like every time you go, there's so many things there that like you could mm-hmm. spend one day in one park and be completely fine. And mm-hmm. you know, the next mm-hmm. time you go, you know, go to that same park, but something else is happening. You yeah. Know? yeah. So exactly. like right. to not change up that storyline or whatever feels yeah. like a, well, that's plus a it was. It was very confined because obviously Disney wanted to promote the the sequels as being, and that's kind of where like Galaxy's Edge fits in. Like they wanted to keep things canonical of sorts, Mm -hmm. so you couldn't have like Luke or you know Leia or Han or any of the old stuff or prequel stuff in in any way involved in this in this storyline and inside of this space because it it all had to be post post Return of the Jedi prequel Mm -hmm. or sequel era stuff. If they were fitting, cramming this story into. So there was no, kind of like, you know, like when you do Star Tours there, mm-hmm. Star Tours, they've redeveloped over the years and to include. Characters. Yeah, like it's yeah. got, so it's got prequel stuff, it's got original stuff, it's mm-hmm. got sequel stuff. You get a random, you know, story every time you run through there, which I love doing that one now because it's such a fast, quick line. Like you can it get is. in and sit down yeah. in 10 minutes and mm-hmm. you might get a new experience <laughs> five times in a row or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's something like that where, yeah, to your point, Sam, they, you know, Disney's usually very good in their parks about changing up experiences and <coughs> making it exciting and new and different. Or just you know. different, like, mm-hmm. you know, Epcot has like the food and wine festival, but then they mm-hmm. also have like the flower and art festival. I'm going to butcher that, but they have different things that they right, do right. to keep it interesting and they always change it up. Um, did I mean did the, the this cost include food? I th- mm, I think no. Well, it, Actually, what it didn't include was that special drink. Was Remember say, that thing? There was that super <laughs> oh, drink. Man. Or whatever. Remember we talked We're about it last it the cup. Yeah, it was yeah. like a souvenir cup. They brought it out like in a. Oh, I think it was like man. I think it was supposed to be a Kyber crystal. Drink. Yeah, like Kyber that's crystal it. drink. Kyber crystal drink. And like they oh. brought it out in a special that was an container extra, and popped like it open. Two grand or something like that. Oh my god! This just. This Marco just could probably make that at home. This was I, not. I mean, I know Disney World's expensive. I've been there enough to know that it's very expensive. But they they've usually make an effort for people yeah. that don't have a ridiculous amount of money. I think they went over their skis it. on this they one. Did. Have you ever heard of the concept floaters, swimmers, and divers, as it refers to yes. Star Wars folks? Yes. You know, floaters just being the people that you know, like you casual know, fans. Into it, casual fans. Yeah. Swimmers a little bit more right. into it, and then divers like deep dive. Right. Mm-hmm. Like they know everything. Which would you're you describe diver, yourself? Yeah. I'll say, oh no, I'm a floater. I'm a diver. But even I could dive. Diving uh, or swimming over here? I think I'm in between a swimmer and a diver because Fair there enough. are things that I would, you know, we have gone and made lightsabers and things like that, but I do have to rein my husband in because <laughs> I have to be the voice of reason. You're on the border then. Yes. What is Marco? Marco, you swimming? Uh, uh, he's swimming. So, yeah. But anyway, yeah. they built this for divers and there's just they not did. that many divers no. out there. Wealthy apparently. divers at that. Wealthy yeah. divers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the $5,000 stay in there. Now, yeah. wait a minute. Have you seen this place? Because no. you've been to Disney. No, it's like what? off. It's like is it off resort. Yeah, like off. have you seen it? No, it's. Oh. I think it's somewhere. It's it's apparently it's kind of close. hidden a little bit, but it's it's. I think it's close enough to Galaxy's Edge, obviously, where you get in a transport or something like that. Yeah. It takes you there. Right. Mm-hmm. And again, the whole idea of being immersive, like you don't you don't see the outside world other than Galaxy's Edge when you get there, mm-hmm. and you're supposed to stay there to pretend you're still in Star Wars yeah, world. Right, right. So it must be somewhere close by, but I have no idea where. I would like, like to see it, but see. not pay money for it. I know. You know? <laughs> like, I'm curious. It'd be nice if they would just, like, now that if they're not going to do this, just, like, open it up for people to, like, walk through at least and, like, mm-hmm. see what it all looked like and mm-hmm. something, you know, turn it into a, an attraction of some sort. A museum maybe, of our maybe failures. Maybe we can get a deal for Bartek. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> a Bartek deal. I love this, Marco. That's a great idea. It only holds 400 people people though so well you know it could be a, just a small you know vartec i don't it's know a, it's a know. Raffle maybe we'll have a reception or just you know just the tech connect podcast crew goes down there and checks it out you know like we can... here's the other reason why it failed didn't have a swimming pool 
I mean, if you're taking, oh, yeah. you know, you got to have some break. It's I mean, Florida. It's, like I said, yeah. it's, they were all in on this. Well, that's that's like, the other part of it too. And you could not right. Leave. That's you're, the other part there. of it too. Is like you have to. It has to be to your point. The divers. It has got to be everyone in the family who's going has got to be totally into. Got to be into it. Like you know, it'd be one of those things. Like if it was a little less expensive, maybe it's something I could talk my wife into doing. But mm. she also might be like. I don't like the world of Star Wars. Why would I want to go live in this for a couple of days? You're telling me there's no pool and I can't go to any of the That's Disney right. parks to do anything Exactly. Else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, like, it's, this sounds it's like, a hard sell unless hard sell. every single person going is really into Star Wars. That's right. That's so. right. Well, then that's a, so. Maybe right. they just needed a bar that you could go. To. They have one. <laughs> they they had a bar. They yeah. have one. It's called Oga's Cantina, and it's great. Just needed to <laughs> figure <laughs> out how to make. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> take it. To, what was what was the planet that the uh, the Caminos, the Camino yeah. planet, or whatever? Yeah, like, well, have, that's where there's water. You know, yeah. just find a way to do that. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, all right. So next up, let's talk about a little bit of news that came out of Celebration. If, if you don't know about this, Celebration is the big Star Wars event every year that talks about, you know, celebrates Star Wars basically mm -hmm. with fans and the people, you know, working on all this yep. stuff. Um, it's usually where they make big announcements. Do you live stream this? I do not. Oh, no. wow. Whoa. I just catch Sam? it after the fact. No, no I don't either, by the way. I'm not, again, not that it. deep of a diver. I'm like a, <gasps> you know, I'm a little below the what surface. What are we doing here? You know, I'm swimming around. I'm looking at the fish. <laughs> I'm not interested in checking out the wreck of the Titanic, though, you know? Fair enough. Like, uh, I'm not getting in the submersible. But this is their big deal, right? This uh, is where yes, they, this announce is where they make everything. all their big announcements. So let's go through some of these announcements real quick here. First of all, the big highlight announcement of the entire thing is three new films in production. Now, yep. we have heard this in the past. In production, movies. though. Well, okay, I take that back. Not necessarily in production uh. yet. Three new films in development. Let's okay, put okay. it that way. <laughs> that is a big distinction. Because we've heard yes, that in the past yes. plenty. Mm -hmm. There's been plenty of films in development for the last right. five or six years since yeah. Rise yeah. of Skywalker that have not happened yeah. and may never happen. Mm -hmm. What we've got on the agenda right now, though, is the fr uh, three of them that are coming out there. One is from James Mangold, the director of uh, Logan and the most recent Indiana Jones film, who's apparently going to do a story about the first Jedi, like the first person to wield the Force. So we're talking way back in history way of back. the Jedi. Uh, another one is bringing back Ray, Ray Skywalker, I guess, as she's now known from you know the the new trilogy. See, Marco Marco's already doesn't already like this. This not, is the one I like. Not liking this one. I like this. We're one. basically following up on the new trilogy with her a few years after the fact, That's right. building a Jedi Academy, teaching the next yes. level of Jedi, mm -hmm. and then finally. Dave Filoni is being handed one to direct. He is the, kind of the mastermind of the Star Wars universe, currently the TV universe, the guy behind the scenes from Mando, most mm -hmm. of the animated series, Ahsoka, Book of Boba Fett, all this stuff. He's going to be doing one wrapping up this post, you know, uh, post Return of the Jedi, New Republic, Mandoverse storyline, wrapping that up there. Not many details given beyond, obviously, what we've what I just said there. So mm -hmm. we don't know much about what's going to happen here. But what are your guys' thoughts on these, Marco? You've already kind of indicated you're not too happy about the Nora what? Ray movie. Can we just be done with it? I think it should die. Like, I'm I'm also with Marco. Back, we could visit her back in another movie in just a 15 minute scene, right? Right. We don't right. need a whole cameo movie. of sorts. Yeah. Wait, don't we need to like make this story continue on? Well, or what do they is, want? Is, I think because we've no, me? that's not complicit to like. We've talked about this before in previous years, and I've mentioned the fact that I'm I'm very much done with the Skywalker saga. I see. Now, well, if, what about the whole training of doing, new Jedi? I mean, that's fine, but I, I feel mean, like we get enough of that. I feel like I would I care to know more about the training of Jedi's when um, Kylo was Ben. And, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing that story, like figuring out what happened there, the, you know, the, Luke's Academy. Yeah, mm. and how that failed so miserably. Yeah, why? Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. like, I, I, I... You know, given the benefit of the doubt here, and, you know, and I like Daisy Ridley just fine. I thought she did a fine job, but, like, but, yeah, I'm, it's... I, the sequel trilogy is not exactly my favorite. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's not the part of the story that I feel like I desperately need to know more about. Mm -hmm. I've been enjoying the stuff we're getting between the original mm -hmm, and the sequel trilogy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But again, I think I'm I'm still also just at this place where I just want whole brand new Star Wars stories. Mm -hmm. I kind of that's why I kind of feel like the whole James Mangold one, the one about going back in time to the early days of the Jedi and the first mm -hmm. Jedi. Mm -hmm. I'm a oh, little, so you're not anti Jedi. No, I'm you're not that saying, but I'm a little more excited yeah. about that because it's it feels like it would be a whole brand new setting, mm -hmm. a new world, mm -hmm. new set of circumstances. Because mm -hmm. there is so much very lore, new ideas. You know, yeah. From exactly. the Knights of the Higher Republic and from literature that's written like I I'd love to see that on screen. Yeah. Marco, is that, was that your kind of take, too? Yeah, that one's yeah. the one that really kind of excites you the most? Yeah, I'd love to see what they would do with the history and how they would bring it visually to life. Yeah, yeah. Mm. There's so many, I feel like, yeah, you're right, like the Caminos, and there's so many, pre, there's so many like, groups of, of alien species that the books touched upon that, like, 
we as viewers have never seen. And it would be right. just really cool, I think, in my opinion, to 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 get that up on the big screen. Yeah. So how far back are we going with this? Uh, I think OG we're talking like general. thousands of years. Thousands, thousands of years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, like, so there would be almost no reference to anything we're familiar with at all. Nor recognizable, perhaps? Potentially, we'll yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know if technology will be anywhere mm-hmm, close to, mm-hmm. you know, what, I mean, I guess there's some spacefaring probably going on. I don't think, I, you can't really have a Star Wars where no one goes into space in a spaceship, <laughs> I would think. This is fair. Yes. This is fair. Maybe they're doing some kind so of like sailships or something. So we got hyperdrives at least. Yeah, yes, maybe yeah, yeah. something, yeah, yeah, at least a little bit of, you know, okay. spacefaring going on. But yeah. I look at this and I think of like, I feel like the Ray one is probably going to happen just because the fact that they brought her out in particular to show up on stage yeah and, you don't get on stage and talk and about it right I, I feel like you, they wouldn't have got her signed on and invested in this if there was not really a real intent to make that one happen mm-hmm. and i feel like the mandoverse one that feloni wants to do is probably likely as well we'll talk about this more later because i feel like they've been setting us up for what mm-hmm. his story is probably mm-hmm. going to be mm-hmm. the first jedi one is the one that i feel like maybe the wild card that mm. might not actually end up happening we'll see but it's also the one i could see being like you know, the first one it gets tossed out the window if one of these other ones comes out and doesn't do well. Well, something. what I'm hearing though, that would be the one that the fandom wants. Uh, this is so true. Oh, it's like, but you know, Disney Yeah, Disney doesn't always <laughs> give uh, the fandom what they want necessarily, though, which is okay. sometimes well, for the best. Some, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you're making movies for floaters. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's, well, that's that's just it. Again, we. Talk, I think that's what feels like the Ray one would be is is a movie for floaters yes. for sure, and that's just 100%. it because we've t- we talked about that. I think maybe last year, the year before that. Mm-hmm. I'm concerned about the, and I actually, I'm not going to say too much about this because this is part of something I'm going to talk about later, but I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of high bars to set for the films mm, at yes, this point, yes. mostly because you do have to bring in the floater audience. Yeah, mm-hmm. It can't be just for the divers and the swimmers. Yes. You yep. got to bring some floaters in if it's going to be a successful movie for where the budget you're going to put into yep. something like yep. this. Well, and so. like look at like Andor and look at the, because I finally watched all of that, but look at, um, you know, just they brought out all the stops for, for productions like that, you know, and then if they go and create some kind of half done movie, it's like, well, why would I watch this movie when I could just watch this cinematically produced show that kind of gave me the same feeling. Right. Exactly. So, all right. So some of the other news that came out of the, you know, some of the series we were already kind of aware of that were given a little more insight. One is the Acolyte, which is set during the High Republic days. Um, Now, for anybody who doesn't know, there's a whole like, new branch of Star Wars that's being built out in other media called the High Republic. It's mostly in books and Mm -hmm. comics. Um, I think there's plans for a video game or something there too. But basically a whole new kind of chapter of, you know, the early days of the Republic when it was at their absolute peak. The Jedi were at their maximum strength. The Sith were nowhere to be seen or heard from. And as darkness starts to creep in, basically, Mm, along this island. I I don't know too much about this stuff. I haven't read any of these books (laughs) yet. But apparently the Acolyte's going to be set during that time. (laughs) <laughs> it was described in the article that I found as frozen meets kill bill. It on it, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Which is <laughs> you're right. I don't know how you square that those two, you know, pe- pegs, but you know, okay. You I know. like it yeah. visually. I mean, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah a yeah, lot yeah, of yeah. misbehaving like alien species, and then the Jedi's come in and <laughs> start they kicking eradicate the butt. It. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, so very curious how that one's going. The cast also looks pretty phenomenal to this. Um, it was, um, I think, Amanda Spengler, who, or uh, is it Spengler is her name? Amanda something, Sternberg. Amanda Sternberg, I think is her name, who might be known from some folks from uh, uh, the Hunger Games movie, the very first one. She was the little girl, Rue, that got murdered maliciously mm. in that movie. She's been in some other stuff since then, too. There's also Lee Jung Jae, who recently starred in Squid Game, was you know, really well known for that. Manny Jacinto from The Good Place. If anybody ever watched mm. that fantastic sitcom, um, which if you did, you know, he he was uh, Jason, you know, so you know, the total <laughs> like really weird good. stoner dude. Yeah. And then and also Daphne Keene, who was uh, Logan's clone slash pseudo daughter in the Logan movie and has done some other stuff, too. So really oh, yeah. fascinating cast um, for this. I'm I'm kind of pumped about this because I feel like, again, we're getting into a different timeline, different type of story, very different cast should have nothing to do with the Skywalker saga whatsoever. So I'm kind of pumped about that show. And, and that's going to be a show, a series? Yes, yeah. that's going to be mm-hmm. a Disney Plus series, which yeah. is supposed to release sometime in 24. Mm. Um, the other stuff that may be coming soon within the next year or so, more Andor. 
Um, I don't know if they've officially started filming again, but hopefully we get the season two of that in 24 or at least early 25. Um, Bad Batch's final season should be coming up next year. And another series that we, again, don't know too much about called Skeleton Crew, which Mm -hmm. is set during the Mandoverse timeline. It's about young kids on a journey throughout the galaxy. Jude Law apparently has a prominent role in it. And every episode is being directed by a bunch of interesting directors hmm. that have done some stuff. And some of them have done stuff in Star Wars before. Some of them are kind of new to it. Mm-hmm. Um, all they did basically is they introduced Jude Law and the and these bunch of unknown kids that are going to be uh, part of this story. But not much is known about the uh, Is that going to be story. animated yeah. or is that? No, that's a live action live show action. as well. Okay. Yeah, so. Man, that's a lot of production. So lot, lots of stuff that coming up moly. hopefully in the next year or two, you know, and we have hopefully going to have some actual films on the horizon. Any any final thoughts you guys had about this news from Celebration or any, anything that stood out to you? Just that. A lot of production. Yeah. Yeah, you know, definitely that excited. Out there. Take my money. I mean, I know Disney Plus, <laughs> they, they up their... You say that every they, year. I do, but they... <laughs> Take they, my uh, money. Just, they, just. they upped their prices, and it was like a serious, like, we did have a conversation. I was like, do we keep it? You know, do we purge it? But right, I was like, right. no, come on, we have to. This is what gives us... Yeah, all the all, your, all the to. all of our favorite yeah. nerd stuff. Yeah, is, I can't, is I can't get Disney. rid of it. Yeah, no. Exactly. Mark, are you any additional <laughs> thoughts here? Any of the stuff that interested you? No, I don't think so. I think we covered it all. All right, cool. And then the last bit of big news that came out fairly recently, actually, is that Dave Filoni, again, kind of been the mastermind of Star Wars TV Mm. for the last decade or so, uh, has been named as Lucasfilm's chief creative officer. So, oh, a round of applause. I'm f- fond of this, too. I mean, this guy, obviously, he gets Star Wars. He's, you know, really loves some of the old stuff. He mm-hmm. loves some of the old legend stuff that got, you know, wiped out of canon. You know, he brought, you know, a lot of these characters back, and a lot of stuff back, you know, from that time or whatever. And has, you know, incorporated that into the animated series, all these new shows. I mean, if if you've been enjoying the Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka, all this this kind of world they've built around this timeline, mm-hmm. you pretty much have him to thank for. I mean, John yeah. Favreau has been a big part of it, too. I mm-hmm. think his name recognition helped get a lot of this stuff off sure. the ground and, and sure. jumping in to direct it all. But, but Filoni's, Filoni's been, been doing been it the, forever. And... Yeah, he's been the creative force behind it, and he's the one who's been pulling these, these stories together. So, I you know, I think Lucasfilm has been looking, and Disney's been looking for the Kevin Feige of of the, the who is the the mastermind behind the MCU they've been looking for that kind of person to be the mastermind behind Star Wars mm-hmm. and i think it's helpful maybe to have some i mean you you know a lot of people will look at the MCU now and say like well MCU is a hot mess at this point like yes but we cannot forget about that first decade of all the avengers arc and all the infinity you know stones arc or whatever and how amazing that whole arc was in part because one person was kind of Mastermind and controlling everything, and mm-hmm. maybe if that's what the the role Filoni takes to kind of start bringing Star Wars together into a master plan, I'm I'm okay with that. I'm yeah. good with I'm good with him being announced as in this particular role. So you think everything's going to have to run through him? Yes, yeah. he will be like the creative director essentially. You know, yeah. and he'll be the one making calls on you know what does and doesn't fly. And you know, I mean, granted, you know, there's always the Disney of it all. You know, that they'll there's I'll, stuff they'll axe, but yeah, I'll pull a quote though. He said, "I'm not telling people what to do." But I do feel I'm trying to help them tell the best story uh, they want to tell, right? So, yeah. you know, enabling people along exactly. the way, yeah. not really telling them what to do, which I think will be important, but it'll be curious to see how it pans out. Yeah. You're yeah, just excited so. that he's a part of the I'm process. just, yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's a wise choice. I mean, again, you know, I think part of what people were excited about about Star Wars right now is a lot to do with what he's brought to the mm-hmm. table mm-hmm. with some of these series. Because, again, there's been a huge struggle, obviously, to figure out what to do on the film side of things. Mm-hmm. And I think the reason Star Wars is still very much alive and very much in the public consciousness has been because of what he's been doing to make it happen on the on the TV side of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah, yeah. So. All right. Well, with that said, let's start. Let's start talking about some of the the various projects that did release this year. Um, we'll kick off with a quick. I want to do a quick talk about a couple of the animated projects, which was Star Wars Visions Two, which is kind of like a an anthology series of you know of animated you know shorts done by various uh, you know anime houses you know and and, and production studios that are fairly well known, mm-hmm. um, or at least if you're in the world of anime, they did another batch of those. We saw the first one a couple years back. Another batch released this this year, as well as the Bad Batch season two of the spinoff from the Clone Wars, I yeah. guess, for lack of a better term, that follows briefly after, you know, a t- um, um, Revenge of the Sith and follows a a group of clones who broke away from the whole Order 66 programming and are now off just kind of roaming the galaxy, assisting people kind of like it's a, I don't know. Yeah. 
It's almost like a Dirty Dozen style, you know, like just. <laughs> yeah, it's the Bad Batch. What, A-Team. There you go. A-Team. Yeah, That's definitely. a very good, yeah. a very mm-hmm. good analogy there. Of, you know, just this rogue band that kind of goes out and is helping out where they can. And there's there's a bit of a storyline they're building in there, which I think is, again, starting to incorporate some stuff from the previous Legends era. You know, they got into Mount Tantus, the cloning factories and all that stuff. And I think, and again, we'll talk about this again a little bit later. I have a feeling there's going to be a very small connection there between where the Mandoverse is going, probably. Mm. Now, Sam, you said you haven't finished Bad Batch season two yet. I'm right? like three three episodes away, but okay. I did love Visions. I thought did you? It was incredible. Okay, what did you like about it? Because Mark and I were talking about it before we got on, and we were not terribly impressed with this batch. Oh, I you know I loved the first one. I'm looking at the episode list right now, the Sith one, where um, that girl was like running and she had that really cool like, like katana the art style yeah, thing. Like, yeah, like that was yeah. really cool. Um, but I just think I really I as a person I I read a lot of anthologies. I watch a lot of anthologies i like that like quick little burst of storyline in each episode and so for me i'll eat anything up that's an anthology and with all of these being of course star wars related and a lot of them were you know running from imperial forces or a force a force sensitive child that was Mm -hmm. kind of and i feel like that was the you know the in the one oh gosh uh the two sisters and then um the one at the end with the girl who could like sing and she had this like ability um, I just feel like it was, you know, we see a lot of the force sensitive children things with the, um, uh, the video game that just came out and that I just feel like I'm interested to know more about that. And I feel I enjoyed it. <laughs> I can't really tell you much more about it, but I just remember that was something we started watching one night and we finished it in the night. And okay. It was so good. Marco, what wow. did you, how did, like you said, you weren't quite as impressed with this batch. Definitely compared to season one. I, I thought this was very lacking. Yeah. It, it, there were some th- I did like the first, the Sith one. It borderline to me on almost too artistic and not mm-hmm. enough like story. Right. Um, and we should also point out that, like these are non-canonical stories. They're just like, hey, yeah. take the Star Wars universe and build your own quick little short animated f- film around it, essentially. It doesn't have to be officially connected to anything else. It doesn't have to be be a real story that could, that had happened or could have happened, but just run with it. Yeah. But I think that's the beauty of Star Wars in general. Is you can think of it as a medium that oh, people right. can literally... Star Wars is a place. Yeah, yeah, and you can make, you know, your whole other world with it, your whole other cast of characters, and, and giving giving that that task to anime production houses is just so cool to me. Yeah. So. Um, Dean, what, did and you they watch went, these? No, I didn't watch okay. these, unfortunately. But they did go around the world. I mean, if you look at oh, all yeah. the places, the, the different countries that mm-hmm. were involved or anime studios, uh, everywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chile yeah. was in yeah. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the UK. Yep. And it wasn't just your South typical Africa. Asian yep. companies that yep. are right. monitoring right. those. So. Ireland. Yeah, it's yeah. been a while since I watched these, so I didn't, like, I, I found I'd made a couple notes mm-hmm. about them as I was watching it. I, I definitely noted Sith, which I think was the first one of this new batch. That the whole like artist, that the whole animation style was very much like a paintings. Mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. And the whole hunt by her master, I thought that was fascinating. The other ones too that I noted was Screechers, which I don't know, do not remember much of the story. There's a horror aspect to but it. I, I all I remember is at the end of Screechers r- r- suddenly realizing you weren't watching a Jedi coming of age story, but a Sith coming yes, of age story. Yes. And I remember that being like kind of a nice neat twist that I was not expecting and ch- kind of changed my entire perspective of that particular installment. Uh, and then the last one into in the stars, which had a I think that was the one about the sisters, wasn't it? Um, it had like the claymation feel yeah. to it. Yes, yeah. that was I, just from I think the the animation style, like going that old school like claymation animation style, was was what made that one really awesome to me. Mm-hmm. But it was also just a really good touching story. Yeah, I think too. The sister so, never really believed her little sister that she. Yeah, could yeah, yeah that was it. Yeah. So yeah. there was a lot of stuff. There were some little things I liked, but I, but I think kind of to Marco's point, the the overall set of them did not appeal to me as much as the first set, which in the mm. first set, I feel like there was maybe one that I just was like, ah, I didn't really like this at mm-hmm, all. Mm-hmm. Whereas this one was more of, there was maybe two or three that I really enjoyed. And then the others were just very mediocre and I was kind of indifferent to it. So much so that I literally don't remember anything about them. Yeah. Right <laughs> at this point. But the first season was really good, Marco. The one, the, um, the, the like Shanghai like style. I don't remember what the name of yeah. that. That one was fantastic. Um, but I think for me, I just, I, love any sort of content Star Wars. And so if it's in 15 minutes, I give it to like me. I felt like these were almost more directed to a much younger audience. Mm. That's mm-hmm. possible. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Like the 10 to 12 year old range where these were 
kind of cartoony, younger, right? You yeah. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- themes and, and things that you're going. Now there was the first, the the one where this you know girl is actually becoming a Sith, like you said, maybe a little bit more deeper dive for Star Wars fans. But, right. Right. But, but yeah, coming, I think yeah, to your point, of age, though, you can definitely like classify it as being that. Yeah, and I think, Marco, to your point, you're right because I think this is this is the kind of stuff that somebody who is not necessarily a Star Wars devotee could mm-hmm. come in and and watch and enjoy these for what they are. Yeah. Little, nice mm-hmm. little snippet stories. Yep. I think you know if you're a Star Wars fan, obviously there's little layers and notes you might pick up on that you know are, are a little more fascinating. But I could easily see somebody who knows nothing about Star Wars just appreciating and enjoying these anyway. Yeah. For Floaters. What they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very yeah, much yeah, so. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then as far as Bad Batch season two, I won't say much about that one because I, Bad Batch is still that show that I just don't know that was ever necessary. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's fine. Like if you're a fan, well, if who's you're it a fan appealing of, to then? You think? It's really for Clone the fans Wars. of the Clone Wars, basically. Yeah. Okay, if you're a fan of the Clone it. Wars cartoon, this is kind of a follow up to that. Fills in some gaps, a little bit of gaps mm-hmm, between mm-hmm. that and Rebels and some Do of the stuff. Do you think it could have been know. one season? Probably. Okay. Like there's, it's, it's definitely, again, kind of like Clone Wars, where I felt like, especially the early seasons of Clone Wars, there was a lot of filler episodes that just mm-hmm. didn't need to be there. Mm. And even though these are short seasons, like, like maybe 10 episodes, eight, 10 episodes, there's still a lot of stuff that I feel like is just unnecessary filler and then some interesting story beats that get you somewhere. And I'm kind of, I'm, I'm glad to hear that they're going to have, that season three is going to be the last season because I'm, I don't know what else you could do with this story mm. at this point. I, there is, there is an underlying storyline, which I won't say too much of because I think it's, towards the end of the season that Sam hasn't gotten to yet. But where I feel like there's somewhere they're going with this, but I also do, again, feel like this is a slightly unnecessary story overall. Yeah, yeah. So Interesting. Yeah. All right. So now let's, let's get into uh, season three of the Mandalorian, probably yes. still the Mando. premier series of Star Wars, you know, like what again has kind of held the Star Wars universe, I think together <laughs> over the last few years because of the, the amount of excitement and interest in this show. So yeah, uh, let's let's say let's start off before I give my opinions here. I'm just from you guys. What were your overall thoughts, opinions? You know, wh- how did you feel about Mandalorian season three? Did it live up to the previous seasons? Did you like the direction it went? Where do you think maybe we're going from here? Um, Sam. So you know, I I liked it. I really did. I liked it because I feel like it filled a lot of plot that we needed about Mandalore mm. and everything like that. Did it live up to the previous seasons? I don't think so as far as action goes because there wasn't a lot of, you know, that happening. That mm. mystery there wasn't really there a couple there good anymore. battles still. There were some oh, good yeah. battles, <laughs> sure. But, like, you know, for the first couple of seasons, we're like, why does he have this kid that looks like Yoda? Like, yeah, we, right. There's, like, mystery, and we have to, like, find out why right. it's happening. Mm. Um, and this season was not about that mystery. No. I mean, they were trying to figure out why, uh, what's his name, Moff Gideon Moff was Gideon. so you know, interested in Mandalore right, and like, you know, right. he was doing stuff down there and that wasn't good. Spoilers, spoilers. But, um, yeah, this is a spoiler episode. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it was good for the lore because I really liked Clone Wars. I liked Rebels. So I feel like a lot of that, if I could have my own standalone show for me, like just, you know, the Mandalorians and things like that, which I guess we kind of did, but just that backstory. That's basically what this season That's was. That's basically what this was... season was, and I feel like it scratched that itch that I had. So, okay. mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Dean, your thoughts. Yeah, I Especially would Especially I'm curious from you because, again, as Sam mentioned, a lot of the Mandalorian lore that they introduced here yep. is stuff that's a holdover from the animated series, and I know you have not watched this. Exactly. So there were whole elements where it's like, what, what are we doing here? What, right. what, where are we right. going? What's happening? Why? A lot of why. A lot of softer points, you know, a lot, you know where and maybe that's not the right word, but a lot of just lulls in right, in, right. in the storyline but still good enough i think to keep people you know into it right I, mean, I was still very very interested in where it was going i i found myself asking more of those questions but that's okay yeah uh, you know yeah the grogu of it all i thought was interesting this season because he kind of felt like sidelined he did after the first two seasons being mostly about him until the but, end and not to well, that's true and yeah. not to not to mention the fact also that and we forget about this sometimes, but if you did not watch the Book of Boba Fett and you came into this new he, he's season... He's back. He's where, like, why is where, he back? Where's, <laughs> why is the kid here again? Like, didn't, he, didn't Luke come and take him away? Why is yeah. he back? What, what, what do you, yeah. And with almost no explanation, I was basically like, sorry, you need to go back and watch the Book of Boba Fett, you know, yeah. and at yeah. least the last, like, three episodes that explained all of that. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I found that interesting that he was not a, a focal point. Again, yeah, towards the end of the season, a little bit more... 
I did like the idea because I felt like it, we were always heading this way of Grogu becoming a Mandalorian, mm-hmm. like, you know, actually being brought into the mm-hmm. the fold, you know, and, and adopted essentially as a, you know, Mandalorian trainee or something. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and we started seeing a lot more of his power potential, obviously, mm-hmm. especially, again, this episode's filled with spoilers. If you have not watched all the season three of Mandalorian, Mark, you've seen it all, right? Okay. If we have not watched all this, we're spoiling stuff. So, you know, t- tune out for a bit. Put this one on pause. Go finish <laughs> watching and come back. But like, you know, at the end of the season when he's, you know, per- basically saves them from a giant explosion with his tiny yes. little hands. <laughs> tiny little hands. And, and you know, which a very much shades of Rebels. Oh, know, definitely. Oh, definitely. Big time. Oh, yeah. I see. Uh, Sacrifice I myself. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. But more importantly, though, so... so I will say I kind of felt the Mandalorian stuff started getting a little bit boring at times throughout uh, the season. A little old, yeah, little lulls, right? Because yeah. I am not as big of a fan of the Mandalore stuff as mm. some other folks. That was I thought some of the stuff in Clone Wars and Rebels that mm. kind of bored me a little bit at times. Mm-hmm. Like what it's about just it? Politics. Board, uh, it is politics. Yeah, it, yeah it's yeah. it's like a it's because it becomes almost like giant political family drama kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it never quite rang for me as much as some like other why stuff. does the armor have all this power? Over, I mean, I she makes know. a lot of decisions. Yeah. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, so there's just a lot of stuff about that that I was like, uh, I don't know that I really wanted a whole season. Mm. That's a, a lot about this. Of that, yeah. And more yeah, yeah. about, because, I, again, I felt like we'd tread over a lot of that ground already in the, the animated series mm. and the fact that we're back doing it again. But I also feel like we kind of reached an end to that storyline. I'm, yeah. I'm where going do we to go assume from here? we're at the point now where, like, we don't need to do a lot more about Mandalore at this point. Is there going to be a season four or is he getting a movie? There is another season coming, okay. yes. And then I think the movie's supposed to be after that. Okay, but where that's do we, my understanding. Where do we go from, where do and we... that'll conclude. Well, yeah. probably. I think yeah. the that movie that Filoni supposedly is going to do is going to wrap up all of the the that storyline of that time period is all going to be wrapped up in that movie, and that's when we're done with that period between, or at least this ongoing characters and stories. Uh, I guess of this no time. body, no crime. Where's Moff Gideon? <laughs> is he dead? Yeah. I don't think so. Yes. I, I, oh, well. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, that was a fireball. I mean, uh, yeah, but where's the body? Show me the body. I need yes. the body. His, although he was wearing Mandalorian armor, he was wearing his Mandalorian super armor. Yeah. Is that what it was? So, he was in the super. I know he was yeah. in the super suit, but that was okay. It was like yeah, yeah, some yeah. kind of super armor, I think. So, yes. like, I mean, but he also should have probably been flash fried inside that armor. But, you would think. But so. yes, to Sam's point, show me the body. We, yes. If you, there's if no body. If you have, mm. if you have turned mm. on a television or watched a film mm. any time in history in yes. the last yes. 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 hundred years or so, if you don't see a body, he has returned. Yes. Even then, yeah. it's suspect. somehow getting returned. <laughs> uh, but I think the bigger part of this is I feel like there is I, so so. There's a couple things I want to point out. One, I did like the episodes where they kind of started getting about the stuff of the Imperials that are still hidden and being moles yes. within the New Republic. Yeah. Yeah. I found that one episode that was a complete divergence. Yeah. That was all about the folks living on Coruscant, the former Imperials mm-hmm. who are reformed mm-hmm. and are trying to like make a life for themselves. Which and that's you find never out, work. no, and you find. I mean, <laughs> I think I've think, seen the sequel. I think a lot of what this, yeah, a lot of what this show is trying to do is bridge the gap between the original trilogy and the new ones, mm-hmm. where you're we're going to have an explanation of basically how the First Order came to be. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a little bit of an explanation about. I mean, we already got the hints about the Jedi Snoke. Academy and stuff. Yeah. Snoke, where that mm-hmm. might have come from, like you know how the Emperor came back. Mm-hmm. I think there's a little but they're trying to lay some groundwork mm-hmm, there stuff that mm-hmm. that those trilogy of movies did not bother to do just like oh yeah and by the way uh the emperor's back okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this show might be making an effort to be like all right well let's give you at least a hint of well, why maybe the arc of the story needs this series then is what it, you're saying it could yeah you know i think there's a it's like, i don't it's one of those things where i'm like i don't necessarily care but fine if you feel like you need to explain this stuff away let's do it mm-hmm. and then also i think and we'll, i'll talk about this a little bit more when we get into ahsoka i think Gideon and the cloning tanks is big time setting up mm-hmm. where this where this whole saga is going. Because again, oh. I think that's what's going to lead us to Snoke. I think that's what's going to lead us to the resurrected emperor. Mm-hmm. I think the, the that whole uh-huh. part of uh, that whole part of and it's also something which again I'll talk to you a little bit more. That's about why he in a needed moment. the midichlorians from the get go. I think this mm. is also where where Filoni has has went back and grabbed the stuff out of the old legends, mm-hmm. you know, the Star Wars content that came out between the original trilogy and the prequels and and also some stuff before Disney bought it out where he's like, there was good stuff in there that you guys wiped out, that yeah. Disney wiped out. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take some of this stuff and I'm going to throw it into the Do current it. canon. And I'm fine with that. 
because the cloning stuff was a big part of the whole Thrawn mm-hmm. trilogy, the original Thrawn trilogy. Mm-hmm. There was a whole cloning facility mm-hmm. that that the Emperor had run. That the, you know that Thrawn comes across and starts making clone troopers again. Like I feel like that's what we're doing here is we're we're moving towards that. Like, and I I have a feeling that's a big part of what this Filoni movie is. Going I to be see. About. So even though Mando destroyed all that stuff, you know that doesn't mean. It's no. all, yeah. No. Someone else. There's is, other the facilities. Yeah, that tech's going to be out yeah, there yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't their only facility. They didn't have all their eggs in that basket. <laughs> One basket. No. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So, but again, I'll mention a little bit more about that when we talk about Ahsoka here because I think there's even more of Ahsoka that's leading us well, to where we're from. What did you think going. about the end, though? Or are you are you moving on? Or are you so from Mandalorian? Yeah, like, where you got Mando and Grogu just sitting yeah, there like, at a, like they got at a their trailer little, in the desert. I feel like it's one of those things where <laughs> if that is the end of the series, it was going to be the end of the series. It's a satisfactory ending, but it also makes me kind of this is where I because if there is going to be another season, which again my assumption there is, even though I've not officially announced that. But now it's going to be their adventures, right? Yeah. And that's what I'm fine with because I want to get back to more of what the first couple of years felt like, which uh-huh. was just like. Mando and Grogu just out having cut fun adventures together. I'd be fine if most of the episodes are just like fun little one offs of him just going off and, you know, and yeah. doing a little mission for the Republic or helping yeah. out in yeah. some yeah. way, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. like yeah. helping that could even be its helping own animated people. Well, he's a bounty series. guy, right? Yeah. I would watch it if it was his own animated series. You know, uh, I see. Just something yeah. kind of played right. down a little mm. bit. Yeah, but, right. but you're right. There is a, it was a, it was an interesting way to end it because it, it had a bit of finality to it. And mm-hmm. yet at the same time, like, there's no way you're, you're done here with this point. I mean, like, there's got to be more of these characters, right? But yeah, I like that. Kind but you're, of thing. it sounds like you're done with the Mandalorian arc anyway. I, like the, you don't want to go back to Mandalore no, and I, have them take over the planet. I'm fine again with. And, it's one of those things. Like I'm fine if Bo-Katan and the Mandalorians, the other Mandalorians, show up for an episode for some reason okay. to help out with something. Yeah. But I'm done otherwise. Okay. So. Got it. Yeah. And I think uh, they got that finality. They got that. You know, she has reclaimed the. This, yeah. This. You know. Yeah. She's stuff. got the dark saber. She's the leader of Mandalore. Well, They're it, gonna rebuild. It was destroyed you know. though. Was it? Yeah. Moth. Okay, well. Oh, crushed that's, it. That's right. Okay, yeah. Like, yeah. metaphorically, she has reclaimed her throne. Okay, yeah. She, yes, yeah. metaphorically. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I forgot about that. Man, it's been a while since I've watched this. Obviously, yeah. I've forgotten that ending. Yeah. Marco, do you have any thoughts on season three of Mandalorian? Nothing different than, than what you guys have said. All right, yeah. cool. Yeah. All right, let's, let's talk Ahsoka then, because I feel like this was the big series that... I was incredibly excited for us, Sam. You probably were too. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, for it, again, for folks that need a little bit of context here. So, Ahsoka was a character from the animated shows. She was in both the Clone Wars and in the Rebels series. She, in the Clone Wars, was Anakin Skywalker's apprentice. When he was becoming a Jedi Master, he actually took on an apprentice during the Clone Wars. Ahsoka had an amazing story arc throughout the Clone Wars series. Um, as she grew up and grew older and eventually left the Jedi Order, ended up being in a position where she, she survived Order 66, um, which was all part of the last season of, of the Clone Wars, pops up in, in Rebels. Eventually it was you know found out to be a uh, um, uh, basically a, a rebel agent, essentially, that was helping rebel cells out under the guise of a, a called Fulcrum. Uh, eventually became part of that show. Had some some interesting arcs in in Rebels as well. It was not the focal point of Rebels, but had a very interesting arc w- within that show as well. And has basically become one of the most beloved non like non movie characters mm-hmm. in Star Wars canon that, that people are fond of. So this series, obviously, she, you know, she made her appearance in the Mandalorian, you know, and an episode of Book of Boba Fett, very well received. People were super pumped and psyched for the show. What did you guys think of it? Who Sam, wants to start? You want to here? start? <sighs> It got an 86% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I I believe that. I live yeah. by that. I was a little let down by the ending okay, just because they were left there, and it was like, okay, now what? You know, like, right. but maybe that was her growing and Anakin visiting her and being like, you're fine. Like, we can be okay. I really enjoyed it. I wanted to... Um, like punch Sabine like a million times because <laughs> how selfish are you? Like, come on, you're a Jedi. You have you can't have emotions. Come on. But then maybe <laughs> that was not really Jedi either. Right. Know? But like, then maybe that was, you know, her Sabine teaching Ahsoka, you know, we have to love the ones that we you have to fight for the ones we love and get, you know, our friends back. But I liked it, but I wanted more. Okay, from liked it. it but wanted it more. Your thoughts, hmm. So as a floater Again, slash swimmer, yeah, you not so knowing much about went, Ahsoka at all. No, exactly, and that or so any character to me in this that show, was a, a little bit of a, the problem. There was a lot of deepness that I was like, yeah. it's it's just over my head. At least they threw C three PO in there for an episode, so there's something familiar <laughs> that you knew How about. Nice. 
<laughs> so I, I had to watch like season recaps to g- connect all these dots. There was a lot going on. Oh, yeah. There, if yeah. you ask me. Yeah. A lot of backstory or whatever. You this know, was basically Rebels the sequel. So, right. And and so for me, it, still well produced, still all that kind of good stuff. But but the, the deepness of the story as for me, it was a little bit disconnected, and I had to go back and, and, and try to figure out what, what the heck is right, going on. Right. What are all these meanings? You know? Right. Why, why do we need this map again? What, what, what are we doing right, here? Right. You know, those types of things. What and are so, these space whale things? Well, the space whales completely threw me. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what is this, what what is is this strange here? place that Ahsoka went why, to why when, are we she, eating when she ships, seemed like she you know? died? You know? Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, that, I mean, even for a, a floater, you know, whatever, you, you, that's cool. Right. I can get that. Right. Yeah. But the whole jumping into a whale so you can jump <laughs> galaxies and what that means and, oh, that's how we're going to find Thrawn. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, yeah. there's a lot. Yeah. A lot. Mark, Marco, your take is, again, I know you weren't someone who's consumed all of the cartoon stuff either. Um, I, I'm with Dean a little bit. I didn't love it. There were holes to me. Even knowing a little bit more than he does, right. some of the stuff I felt like there were just the space whales, although kind of neat, kind of seemed out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And the fact that oh, we're just going to take you to this place that we just happened to die at, where everybody's right, yeah. But yeah. that definitely gets filled in like Clone Wars and Rebels. Oh yeah, the Night Sisters were touched upon. Yep, yep. Yeah, we know the purgles, all about them. The witches, the Mortis guys. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. the witches. Yeah, the, yeah. Witches. Yeah. the witch thing really bothered me too. Yeah, I was. I had. I had to yeah. catch up on that too. I'm like, ooh, which where I are actually, these people I from? like that side of Star Wars because I like the mysticism angle. Oh, I like it all now that I understand but it. Better. It was very out of left field in this series again. If you yeah. are not familiar, who had it. because yeah. Yeah. that stuff has not been part of any other Star Wars outside of the animated, not even or the legend stuff, not even like a a little bit in the in the prequels at all. No, like no. they just so, they just don't even Darth Maul like a little bit, but yeah. like not even yeah. his origins or anything either. So. Yeah, none of none of that stuff. Yeah, so I, I'm a, I'm with kind of the same opinion of you guys. I was I was a little disappointed because and again this was one this was my show. This mm-hmm, was the show mm-hmm, that I'm like I love Ahsoka. Yeah, I love the Clone Wars cartoon. I love the Rebels cartoon. I love everything they got built there, and I wanted to see what happened next. But I also feel like this was not a, this was not an Ahsoka show. This was a rebels show. It was a oh. rebel show. This and was, it was a Hayden Christensen. Yeah. Like, this was like redeeming. Yeah. Standpoint. This was following up on rebels where what happened to all those characters, you know, cause rebels ends on a, not a cliffhanger, but you, there's an ambiguous it ending Sabine's to it. Show. It was Sabine. It Sabine was, it was, was much more about character. her. It was not really that much about Ahsoka. I just, I see like, you know, I, I expected a, a series really diving into the heart of who Ahsoka is. So is that why was. she was such a strong character? Strong might not be all right. Word in this series. Sabine, Sabine or yeah, Sabine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, like, yeah. I mean, and she was a, she was a great character in the rebels cartoon also, um, you know, had, had a nice arc, you know, like she was a big part of what ha- was going on in Mandalore during that time as well. Her family was supposed to be the ruling family of Mandalore mm. and had been kind of shoved out. And mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. she helped them kind of reclaim it, mm-hmm. you know, at that time, you know. And, and, and she was looking for Ezra. She was dying for Ezra to yep. f- come back. And then yeah. They found them. Yep. And it did. Yep. You're right. It was really like Rebels like lead on because yeah. and maybe the only thing you could make it an, an, an argument against is maybe, you know, I think Ahsoka did a lot of growing as like a, she did. a person and so maybe that's her arc but i also but, my thing with that too was because i feel like in the clone war she had that bit of growth arc when she left she the did. jedi order there but was this she, whole massive storyline where she got accused of murder and basically found herself very disgruntled with where the jedi were going which was very important because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it leads into the events of revenge of the sith and it leads into the idea of the jedi just getting over their skis mm-hmm. and thinking they were too important and too powerful and had everything under control. And meanwhile, you know, the, some of the greatest, you know, darkness ever is just growing. Right within the mist yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they didn't even see it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it was a, and, and Ahsoka had reached a point in her life where she realized, like, I don't know that I am what a Jedi is supposed to be. Like, you know, they, they don't like to talk gray Jedi, but that's essentially what she sort of became. Where it's like, look, I'm not going to embrace these wackadoodle mm-hmm. ideals that you all have. There's mm-hmm. a little too much. Mm-hmm. I don't really fit in with all of that. I'm going to go do my own thing. And then she kind of came back at the end of the series and, you know, was in a mostly a big arc wrapping up Darth Maul and, and, I, and, and explaining where she was when order 66 occurred and how she survived basically. Mm-hmm. And then rebels, she's got a whole different kind of role. Like, you know, she's out there, you know, just helping with, you know, build the rebel Alliance against the empire. And, 
again, I can't, I don't want, because there's a, we'll talk about Rebels in a moment, there's a, a moment of her arc that occurs that is, to me, one of the most amazing moments in all of Star Wars. And I can't say too much about it because I don't want to ruin it if you guys ever want to watch Rebels. But I feel like there was a lot of stuff that happened with her and her character there. I know exactly I what know, you're talking about. I know who Ahsoka <laughs> is. And I wanted to see who that person is in the current context of this world and like where she's, what she's going. Like, I like when they brought her into Book of Boba Fett where she stopped off at Luke's Academy mm-hmm. and was kind of like, mm-hmm. this is cute what you're doing here. But, yeah, right. But also I know in the back of her mind, she's probably thinking you got, you're going to end up screwing this up just as badly as the Jedi Order did before. Yep. And she's not wrong because mm-hmm. we know that happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We know that Luke ends up blowing it mm-hmm. and Ben in the Knights of Ren destroy it all and tear it all down again. Mm-hmm. And he runs off into hiding. I want, that's kind of what I wanted more about. I wanted more of her maybe exploring some of the mystical elements and also with the understanding of the Jedi Order is not really the way mm. and I'm trying to figure out how, where I fit into mm-hmm. what, what we're doing right now. We just didn't get any of that. It was... I do think I do think when we got the flashbacks of her like seeing Anakin become yeah. bad, that was good. For I wanted more was. of that. I, I did want more. Not of that. one episode, but her just kind of like looking at him and and then like seeing like, oh my god, that's just a guy, you know? Like he was my master, and I did like put him on a pedestal, but he was just a guy, right? He was so, just as fallible. Yeah, you know? he, he became Vader for a reason. Yeah, he I could have done that too. My my Sabine just did that kind yeah, of yeah. inherently. So. Yeah, uh, you know, so yeah, I was very curious how the non-animation crowd received mm-hmm, it, and mm-hmm. obviously, like, it sounds like you guys were able to enjoy it, but and I think they did a good oh, job sure. of making it, making it palatable and, and giving you enough to understand without you know needing all the backstory, but having the backstory would help out a lot. Yes, yes. Um, all right, then let's talk a little bit about Grand Admiral Thrawn because that was yes. the other big piece of this story that everyone was excited about. Yeah, um, Thrawn had been introduced in the Rebels cartoon again. This was because that that I think people don't understand sometimes how there was this giant desert of Star Wars between, you know, 1983 and 1999 when we had the, you know, or mm-hmm. well, not, let's say to 1990, essentially, where there was nothing. There was no Star Wars. Lucas had no particular plans to actually do any more Star mm-hmm, Wars, mm-hmm. Was not did not seem particularly interested in it. But, you know, Lucasfilm gave the rights to, you know, people to start writing books and creating storylines that were more or less considered as canon. Lucas himself says, I didn't necessarily consider it as canon, but it was like, he's not doing anything. And he basically, but there was also stuff that was hands off. They were told like, you can't do anything about the Clone Wars because if Lucas does come back, he wants to do Clone Wars stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't kill off characters from the movies. Like all this stuff that they said, you know, you can, you can do and can't do. They built a really massive whole new canon and storylines. And it all started with a trilogy of books, which I know I've talked about before. It's the Thrawn trilogy. Heir to the Empire, uh, Dark Force Rising, The Last Command. This amazing series of books about Grand Admiral Thrawn, this t- like master tactician within the Empire who had survived after the Battle of Endor and started rebuilding the Empire to come back and you know and try to take on the New Republic again. Mm-hmm. Great storylines, great mm-hmm. characters, awesome, amazing new characters that were introduced, and the kind of stuff that as soon as I heard Disney was wiping out the canon, I was so upset mm. that Grand Admiral Thrawn. And mm-hmm. some of these other characters that have been introduced were not going to be gonna part be of there. that anymore. Yeah, yeah. So Filoni basically was like, nope, I'm not satisfied with that. <laughs> so he grabbed Thrawn and dropped him into Rebels mm-hmm. as the basically the big Imperial antagonist of most of the last couple seasons of that show. Mm. But also had to get him off the board because why wasn't he around during the events of the original trilogy? That's right. So that's where they, you know, he got sent off to that other planet yeah. with Ezra. Ended up other being galaxy. With he's like other he's galaxy. Gone, yes. Baby. So that's yeah. that's that's where mm-hmm. the Rebel series kind of ends with that. Now Thrawn is played by the same man who did his voice, um, Lars Mikkelsen, in the in the series in the, the Rebels that. cartoon series, which I think is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Great bit of smart bit of casting, you know, because mm-hmm. his voice was very iconic in he did the, a great the, job. the series. Yes. But I also feel like Thrawn himself as a character was very subdued in this show. Mm. Like, did ah, you? Did you wanted you him to be the, more of a like, badass. Did you? I was say, did you get the impression that he was one of the most terrifying no. and feared? We didn't yeah. get to see Imperial him admirals. Like, not ever. really. I mean, you could tell that he had gravity around him, you know, to a certain degree, but not. I don't know. Yeah. Not, not super just, I just They just didn't give us enough of that. We did get to see how calculated he was. I mean, like he is like the as far as the books go, and as far as like his backstory goes he is one of the most like excelled military personnel that he like graduated top of his class and he was like just he always was like one step ahead of everybody else and rebels right. there'd be sequences where they'd be going up against him and not to give anything away but 
they'd be like, yeah, we're going to do this. And then he would already be waiting there with yeah. the keys. He's playing there. chess while they're playing chess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. He yeah. was very gotcha. excelled at that. So I think there were a few points when, you know, he sends um, the dogs, sends, oh, what's his name? The two um, Sith out to get. Um, All the, uh, um, I forget what they're called now, too. Ray Stevenson and his character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Out to go get Ahsoka and Sabine and Ezra and them. Like, he was very calculated with that. But we only got, like, two episodes of him. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I am really... Excited for I think it. there's a lot more to come there, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, well, well, and I think, that's, for that. I think that's ultimately what we're talking about here. Mm-hmm. I think Thrawn is being set up to be the big bad of the Mandoverse. Mm-hmm. I think we'll, if there's another Mandalorian season, we'll probably see a lot of him in that That is a season. good question. Who would be the big bad other than him? I, I don't think there is any other choice at this point. And I think that would be, I think whatever this movie is, is going to be about him you know, trying to bring the Empire back together and trying to kickstart this off and probably what will eventually lead to the First Order. I think they're trying to do the that storyline. I think they're trying to do those books, basically. Mm, mm-hmm. Now, granted, there's going to be a lot you're going to have to change because, you know, those books heavily involve Luke and Leia and Han. Mm-hmm, you know, it was mm-hmm. set like five years after, you know, which I think is about the timeline where we're at here after Return of the Jedi. It's going to be all these new characters for the most part, but I think they're trying to build that same storyline, which in that storyline, basically... He comes back onto the scene. He starts doing all these raids on, you know, New Republic shipyards. He's he's capturing this this ancient fleet or whatever of ships of warships called the Katana fleet. He gets a hold of the Empire of the Emperor's like storehouse of where he mm. stored all of his most powerful items on mm-hmm. this planet mm-hmm. um, and, and this mountain called Mount Tannis where he also has like cloning facilities, old cloning facilities. That's where I think the cloning stuff from mm-hmm. the Mandalorian is going to come in. He, there was also a storyline which I, I kind of thought was what they were doing with Ray Stevenson's character maybe of a crazed clone of a Jedi called Joris Saboth <laughs> who was this, you know, famed Jedi from back in the day who was also still a little bit off his rocker back then too Mm -hmm. and apparently had been cloned at some point and the clones were always a little bit cuckoo Mm -hmm. so he was like extra crazy and was like guarding this storehouse but ended up working with Thrawn and helping him out and or the world between worlds like what was he looking for Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. exactly like Mm -hmm. so there was a lot of I think there was a lot of world building going on in this series a lot Mm -hmm. of building to I think where we're gonna this be. Mandoverse yeah, yeah, yeah. is going yeah. over the next few years mm-hmm. leading up to this movie. But again, that's where I'm also like, that's why this didn't feel like an Ahsoka show. I would have been, I, w- I think I would have been better off if there had been an Ahsoka series that was really very much about her that dovetailed into this kind of Rebels sequel. Mm-hmm. Like maybe season mm-hmm. two mm-hmm. could have been this stuff that we had in this season where they're mm-hmm. go- finally going off to find Ezra, encounter Thrawn, all that I stuff. I agree. I agree. I would have been okay with that. I just wanted more I wanted more of the Ahsoka part of it and not as much about the Rebel stuff. But don't be wrong. Because there's no those season two of Ahsoka. Love I think that, that show. Was technically a limited series. I uh, yeah, that's one of those things that's up in the air. Like, you know, Filoni said, like, I've got ideas if there's a season two, but I don't know. For Ahsoka? Do yeah. Oh, okay. Because, oh, I, I mean, thought that was already... Not not officially, ah, because okay. there's, again, yeah, there's, again, at the end of the series, huge cliffhanger stuff Huge there. cliffhanger Her stuff. and Sabine stuck on that, in that yeah. galaxy still. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you know, and Grand Ray Stevens had passed away, so you won't see him again, probably. But they might figure out a way to recast that character. But him and his apprentice were still on that planet. And, and again, this is a whole nother giant avenue of stories from the, the animated series. They introduced the Mortis Gods. Mm-hmm. Which are these all powerful former force beings that represented basically the dark, the light, and the balance of the force? There's a there's even a potential connection to a, another character, this incredibly terrifying, awful force called Avaloth. Nope, from never the heard Legend that. series. Yeah. Not it's never been any of the movie stuff, or whatever. Not even in the animated series. I think maybe briefly mentioned somewhere mm-hmm. during one of, during the Clone yeah, Wars maybe? when they were getting into like the archaeology. Of, yeah, maybe. So, and it's where you're really deep diving into some of the mythological aspects of of the Force and you know ancient history stuff or whatever. And I don't know. There's there's Maybe a lot that's of room. Where the movie goes. Maybe I don't. Yeah. Know. But yeah. see, but I feel like that would also be an incredibly out of left field. Like if you suddenly just pulled Abeloth in and be like, mm-hmm. hey, here's this incredibly dark, like not not just a Sith, but like give us more rebels. Yeah, I don't know. You know? Like, I just I, think- I don't know. That's how when, you know, you're going to jump into this, but that's how Rebels was great because you did get a lot of like filler and you did get a lot of like explanations for for certain, you know, sex of things and certain groups of people and whatnot. And, right, you right. know, maybe that that would be beneficial. I'll just be happy if we get around to again, if we start basically doing that Thrawn trilogy 
storyline. Mm-hmm. And if we get mm-hmm. like Talon Card, yeah. Mar Jade. Oh yes. Yes. I mean, I feel like they're I feel like they're kind of setting the stage where like Luke is gonna have to be sort of part of this too. And like just go ahead and freaking cast somebody to just, play Luke. Just take <laughs> Stop the- doing the CGI <laughs> face crap. Just uh, find someone you can cast to play him. Uh well, Sebastian know. Stan would yeah, be a really yeah, good he would work. Luke. Yeah. I think here on the Winter the Soldier picture. from the I MCU movies, if picture. you watch those at all. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah, he, yeah, yeah he very yeah, yeah. much looks like Mark, uh-huh. a young Mark Hamill. Uh, he would fit that. I'll show you up uh, side by side. Oh, there you go. Yes, yeah. very much so. All right, very Marco, so. <laughs> Ahsoka, any additional thoughts you had? You kind of said you were similar with Dean. Anything else you want to add there? Do you feel the same vibe that it's kind of, they're using this as like a, the pathway like, to where we're going? That's insane. Okay. It is insane. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's, it's yeah. close. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah go, go check it out yourself. Or send me that link, Sam. I'll drop I it will. in the show notes or something. All right. Well, let's wrap up quickly then, you know, kind of quickly at least. Let's talk about Rebels because, yes. again, it was such a, a big part of what Ahsoka's built from. And I just finished my rewatch of Rebels last night. Okay. I'd been rewatching this series for the last m- several months, getting ready for Ahsoka for one thing. And then I finally finished why I was down to like three episodes left. I was like, I need to binge these and finish watching this series <laughs> before we, we talk about this. So just to give you an insight, if, if you are, you know, someone, I, again, I know sometimes animated series, people are like, Nope, not for me. I don't want to watch a cartoon. I only want the live action stuff, but this is as good as it gets to being as close to other star Wars content. Yes. Just because it's animated doesn't mean that it's, it's not a children's show. It's it's not, it's yeah, not really, right. I mean, it's, you know, it, granted it ran on Disney XD, which, was a thing i don't know if that's even yeah, still like a teen, channel anymore teen disney yeah yeah exactly so you know and 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 i and, and i'll also admit the first season of the show i remember when i watched the first season week to week i felt like it was very slow at first was not mm-hmm. sure if i was mm-hmm. on board and then it takes its pivot towards the end of the first season to really get into the good stuff mm. and from there on out i was completely hooked watching it again on a binge did not feel that at all like it felt like it got to the good stuff very quickly when you're binging it so mm. I definitely recommend, you know, if you're if you're watching it, obviously binging it will make it easier to swallow some of the stuff. They're 20-minute episodes. It's short. Yeah, short, simple mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. But basically the idea is, is they wanted to fill in, again, a little bit more of some of the timeline between, you know, Clone Wars and Rebels both fill in the timeline between the end of the original or the prequel trilogy and up to the original trilogy, essentially. Rebels is set about four to five years before the events of A New Hope. So, you know, Luke would have still been very young. Obi-Wan's already living on Tatooine at this mm-hmm, point, mm-hmm. And the rebellion is just starting to take off. We, most of the series focuses on a very small rebel cell. There's a bunch of them scattered around the galaxy that are, you know, taking little pot shots at the Empire mm-hmm, where they can. Mm-hmm. And basically, a lot, of the, the, a lot of the story takes place on Lothal, which is the planet that that Ahsoka start, the series started on, the planet where she met with Sabine, mm-hmm. um, you know, where you saw the little cute cat, the loath cat and everything, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. That was the big central planet of of the Rebels series because that's where Ezra, Ezra Bridger lived at that time. Young kid out on the streets just trying to get by. The Empire is occupying the, the world. They're, they have set up an entire facility to build new TIE fighters and design new TIE fighters there or whatever. And basically he hooks up with this Rebel group um, which again, all these same characters. The only character that was not in Ahsoka that's in the series is Kanan Jarrus, who was a Jedi that escaped from Order sixty six. We actually see that very briefly at mm. the beginning of Bad, Bad Batch, Batch. Mm-hmm. how he escaped, uh, and he takes he recognizes that uh, Ezra has you know latent force powers, brings him in, starts training him as his apprentice, you know, helps him become a Jedi. And then, again, whole series of events, they find their way to, like, becoming a bigger part of the Rebellion, you know, help out with, you know, some of the early stages. You get a lot of awesome cameos from everybody. Mr. Krabs. Like, yeah. Clancy Lando, Brown. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, Billy D. Williams actually does, like, comes back and voices Lando. Nice. And yeah. You get 3PO and R2 at some points. Yeah, you know, yeah, a bunch yeah. of other random characters from the saga that, you know find their way in there uh-huh. and again ahsoka gets brought back in and, and has some really amazing moments because one of the key things about ahsoka that people always wanted is the idea that at the end of the clone wars cartoon she has no idea what happened to anakin she just assumes that he died mm-hmm. in order 66 along with everyone else well in the Ro- rebels series she finally finds out and makes the connection that he is darth vader uh-huh. and that becomes a huge storyline sure. there's a, there's yeah, a big yeah, two yeah, episode yeah. arc if you watch nothing else of clone wars <laughs> watch I think those if you two. watch that. twilight mm-hmm. of the apprentice parts one and two mm-hmm. two of the most phenomenal star wars storylines this over the well it's one storyline but mm-hmm. two episodes mm-hmm. that encompass some of the most the best star wars storytelling you will ever come across which honestly mm-hmm. like when ahsoka finds out in that like battle that they have is it it like mirrors the way 
um, Obi Wan figure yes. out mm. um, a lot of yeah. a lot of resonance yeah, yeah. with Obi Wan just kind of sorting it out himself in the Obi Wan series as well, which yeah. always like strikes me as so weird that they both did not know that yeah. he became Lord Vader. They knew yeah. oh this big bad's here, and they just. No one ever, yeah. No one ever put two and two together. Me, right? Meanwhile, this yeah. guy who fell to the dark side and that we know was doing bad things on behalf of the emperor, he just happened. He's gone, and this new guy in black shows up. Yeah, shows I'm up. Sure. I'm <laughs> sure they're not related. <laughs> yeah. We never, we never <laughs> said these Jedi were always the smartest. Smartest, yes. Yeah. There, so. we, we killed him. We killed. Right? He's like he, he was on fire. Well, yeah. that's that's a good point. Show yeah. me yeah. the body. That's a good point. Obi Wan yeah. Obi Wan sure. had it. Obi Wan had a pretty good reason to assume yeah. he was dead. A I'll dead give body. this is true. I'll yeah. give that one credit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, he had a pretty good reason. And I guess a tip, Ahsoka's point was more like, well, if my master's still out there, he would have had to have come looking for me or yeah. been in touch. Unless he again, assume, I guess he would have assumed so Ahsoka was dead too. It was a crispy so. little s'more at best. He could have. <laughs> he lived. was exactly. Laying so anyway, next to the lava. Highly recommend <laughs> the rebels. <laughs> highly recommend the rebels series. It's a little stronger overall. I think than the Clone Wars cartoon. Clone Wars has a lot of filler stuff in its early mm -hmm, seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, great character development. You know, they get into a lot of the Jedi mysticism stuff, especially in the last season of, of Rebels. The Ahsoka Invader showdown is, again, one of the most amazing things you will ever see. Worth watching just for that. Freddie Prince um, Jr. plays Kanan Jarrus. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> and Sarah Michelle Gellar, his wife, shows up. She's one of the Inquisitors. We love it. We for love a while. it. Yeah. Great voice work. Great voice work. Great animation. The animation is fantastic. There's some some of the best space battles I've ever seen mm -hmm. in Star Wars mm -hmm. happen in Rebels. Mm -hmm. They just they they have a very clear, even though I, you know, granted, you're like, well, it's animation. Like, well, no shit, but so is everything in the Star Wars movies. Is, yeah. Is animation oh, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of great stuff. They're great use of music. Kevin Kiner, who did the soundtrack for the Ahsoka series, also did mm -hmm. that. He was someone who, I feel like a lot of times when composers come in and do Star Wars that aren't John Williams, mm -hmm. they think I've got to be as far away from John Williams as possible and try mm -hmm. to do a brand new stuff. that has. But they always do so good. They do. But Kiner was at least recognized in the car, in the series, in the Rebel series. Like, look, I'm going to bring in a lot of the John Williams themes. Yeah, like, I'm going right. to use some of that. Yeah. I'm going to do my own stuff. But I'm gonna when it makes sense to use it, I'm gonna use his stuff. And whatever he does, it sounds amazing. It's always like you know, every now and then, just like a random moment, like da 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 da. You're like, yeah, I know that. <laughs> I, know I like that. that. Yeah, <laughs> you can't help get excited about yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So again, if you're gonna check out any of the animated series, check out Rebels. I think that's probably it's it's five seasons. They're all like I think maybe ten episodes each, something like that. Yeah, 10, 15 episodes. Twenty minutes. Maybe. Twenty minutes. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. cake. Yeah. yeah, you can breeze yeah. through this show pretty quickly, and mm -hmm. there, and there's a lot of good ongoing storyline. It would help you make more sense out of Ahsoka for sure, uh, and probably introduce to a lot of stuff that's going to still be part of this Mandoverse mm -hmm. because I don't. Yep. yep. Filoni clearly like you know it's it's his it's part of his baby. He's he's not shying away from bringing this stuff into live action. We saw it already, you know, before we bring a lot of uh, Mandalorian stuff or a lot of Clone Wars stuff in there. I think we're going to see more Rebels in the future, too. There so. you go. All right. That does it for our main conversation here about <laughs> Star Wars this year. Because, again, we could keep doing this for hours on end, just, you know, whatever we randomly feel like talking about. Uh, before we wrap things up with a couple little recurring segments here at the end, I do want to, uh, we got to do all the fun stuff we do on this podcast. And hey, this is the end of the year. We're This is our last this episode yep. of 2023. So this yes. is the time I want to thank all of our Tech Connect sponsors. And I'm going to actually oh, see them this, this time. Yes. So first of all, a big shout out to Zebra and Elo in particular, because sure. they've easily been the two that have you know done a lot mm -hmm. to support our yep. show. Not only Subject is the Tech matter program, experts, yeah. they're always loading as experts for the show. Yeah. They do all, you hear all their ads at the end of every episode. I hope you listen to those because they're, we, Dean and I have fun yeah. doing this. Yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they've got great stuff out there. So thanks to both of them in particular. But then also big thanks to Intel, Epson, Honeywell, Toshiba, Star, and Lenovo. All those See, throughout the there year you go. have yep. supported our Tech Connect program as a whole, has supported the podcast in particular times. Big thanks also to all the other, you know, there's a lot of other vendors yes. and ISVs and VARs yep. that have lent us their subject matter experts of, you know, keep this in train on the show. rolling. That's right. We appreciate you. We look forward to your support again next year and for 2024. We've got lots of cool content coming there too. Hey, big thanks to Marco back there. Oh, Yo, Marco. Gotta shout yeah. him out. Yep. He's the man behind the scenes. We heard him. He, yeah. <laughs> he does all the recordings, <laughs> he does all the editing, uh, he makes clips and stuff. You know, he gets he gets everything uh, looking looking pretty and sounding pretty for all of us so that we can put this show out week to week. Uh, as always, you know, like the show, subscribe to the show, follow the show wherever you're at, leave us reviews, submit your ideas to us. 
Again, we're starting our slate for 24. We've already got a few episodes, you know, in in progress. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Baking in the yes, oven. Yes. Baked out, as Dean baking, likes to say. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, so that stuff's coming, but we need to hear from you. If you have ideas of what you want to hear about on the show, hey, if you if you just want us to do more goofy stuff like this, just tell us. I don't yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I'm happy to do it. Yeah, you know? yeah absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and of course, as always, you can always reach out to us at any time to give us your thoughts and uh, and just connect with us and ask questions or whatnot. You can find us on Twitter slash X at Tech Pod. I don't know for how much longer. I'm I'm. I may just cut off that site because no one seems to care anyway. Uh, and you can also email us, though, at techconnect at bluestarinc.com, which please do that because most of the time, I, if an email comes through Blue Star Tech Connect to us, it's someone trying to sell us something. Yeah, that's right. right? Or someone yeah. trying to get us to put someone on the podcast that has absolutely nothing, nothing to, do to do with, with us, our yeah. industry. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. So it's a bunch put of random guy, stuff. Yeah. Put this I'd love on. to get an email yeah. from someone that's like, hey, guys, I watched the show. I have thoughts. Hey, guys, you're all wrong about Star Wars. <laughs> Here's my thoughts. Let us know. If anyone's going to write to us and tell it us something, it would be that, yes. It would be the Star Wars fans telling right. us that we're wrong, wrong. about something. So yeah. Yeah. find us on there at any time. Send us your info. All right, let's wrap up here. I've got um, two questions I wanted us to finish the episode with. Yes. First two of all, interesting questions yeah, here. Yes. So, so we, we like to talk about sometimes the tech of Star Wars. And mm-hmm. I think we've talked about ships in the past. Yes. We've talked about, you know, Star Wars items that we've encountered or had in our lives that we enjoy, you know, mm-hmm. and, and have enjoyed. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to ask, you know, because let's be honest, the probably the most iconic tech in Star Wars is lightsabers <laughs> and maybe blasters as well. You know, the uh, weaponry yeah. of, Star, yeah, yeah, of yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, People mm-hmm. like to talk about the, the weaponry. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to ask you guys, what are your favorite, what do you think are the coolest lightsabers and or blasters Marco. In, in Star Wars? Marco, who's, you got some thoughts here? Yeah, what's your favorite? Oh, oh see, I know you're Even a, if it's just one of the a lightsaber two? guy. I, that's, hard, that's a hard question. You don't have a favorite? Mm-hmm. You want to think about it for a moment while some of us uh, give yeah, our give answers? Me, give me a few minutes. All right. All right, all right, all right Dean, what about you? I'm going to go with Darth Maul, the double blade. I, uh, because I thought about that one, too. For me, that was like, the lightsaber was cool, right? But right. then the, the whole concept of like a double, what, what are we doing here? It just, To me, it just shattered the it world. It just feels of what, wildly lights, impractical. <laughs> wildly impractical. But that's, no. I mean, the lightsaber you know, itself is, too, I guess. If, if I put my little boy, you know, guy on, that's I'm true. like, oh, that's no, true. dude, give me a double blade. Why not? Yeah. I mean, there's a reason why. And he was such a badass Yeah, with there's that a reason thing. why there's a whole entire framing shot in that movie of yes. him just holding up his yes. lightsaber <laughs> and igniting the other yes. end. So everyone in the theater would be like, ah! It's on, I mean, you know? you know, yeah, the other lightsabers are cool and all, but when I was like mind blowing, I was like, oh, this is badass. It's kind of like taking, how, it took it to a whole like other I, level. It's kind of like how like the Kylo Ren one where he's got the little things that stick out the sides. Whatever. Right. It's like everyone's always trying to figure out a way, like, how can we do more blades? Somehow? <laughs> more blades. Because <laughs> like, we've had the double blade. We've had the one with the little spikes. We had the Inquisitors with the spinning blade. The yes. little spinning blade. Yeah. Thing. OK. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, how yeah, much yeah. more you can do at this point. Like, you, know, you just uh, yeah. have one. It's like a fork. You know, a trident of some sort. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, so then I thought the dark saber was. Can we go? Okay. Can we? Can we yeah, go with that it's one? Not, or it's is not that an official lightsaber? But yeah, okay. okay. A- until they that got broken at the end. It's like yeah, I didn't yeah. think you could just smash the in. No, yeah, the yeah. indestructible saber. Yeah. yeah. So that was kind of like, eh. okay, maybe <sighs> it is uh, Coleco or whatever. <laughs> I mean, some you know, just general. <laughs> what about blasters? About. Did you? Have, is there any blasters that stood out? To I you got at all? no blasters. Okay. I was. Right. I went down the lightsaber. Path. All right, Sam. What do you Sam, got? What do you got? Ahsoka's for sure. Yeah. Oh, I like the, I like both the, of them. The hilt. Yeah. How one and of now, them is. Now, is it different. the original mm. or the second set that she had? Mm, I like the second set because okay. it's gray and yeah. it's you know yeah. she's not attached to anything, but she's still like a force of good. So. All right. Yeah. Well, that was my answer too. Sorry. I'm a side. No, yeah, well, I can't help yeah. it. I think those are iconic. <laughs> you know that she's got like a short one and a long one, mm-hmm. the curved hilts. It's you know, uh, and what, I have those too. I, I was gonna say I remember. I, you I do. I think I told yeah. you. You have the gray curve. Not the gray. No, curve, no. the blue curve. The bl- yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. When I they don't make the gray. The yeah, first yeah. time when I decided to do to get a lightsabers at at Disney World, and I made one. I made my own, and then I decided to go in and buy another one. Mm-hmm. And I ended up buying Darth Vader. I really wanted to get a Sokos, mm-hmm. but all they. I mean, for one, they were. I mean, they're expensive regardless. Yeah. <laughs> but the Ahsoka, so Ahsoka ones were even more expensive than just getting Vader's, probably because you're getting two. Mm. But more importantly, they didn't, they had her original non curved ones. Oh. They had like just her original ones when she was an apprentice like still. Tiny. Yeah. Fetus. And I didn't, yeah. I just didn't dig those as much. I wanted the, <laughs> yeah. I wanted the curved yeah, ones that's not instead. Fun. So, mm-hmm. but okay. I also thought though on the blaster side though, 
Uh, I mean, look, Hans Blaster, iconic. Iconic. That is an iconic Absolutely piece of, iconic. of weaponry. You yes. know? I mean, it's yeah. simple, but it's iconic. Mm-hmm. Chewie's bowcaster. <gasps> yeah, oh. that's a I good always one. Thought, I, I always forget about that. I love that moment in uh, The Force Awakens when Han takes it from him. When Han's like, <laughs> hey, give me that. Head, and he shoots and blows up some stormtroopers. He goes, I like this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I need to give me one of these. Uh, I always thought that little, like, you know, that yeah. first, what, what looks like a, you know, a... Um, um, what do you call it? It's a crossbow, which yeah, is mm-hmm. crossbow. looks like a crossbow, but shoots laser bolts instead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then lastly, because we've been talking rebels, I'll call out Ezra's original blaster slash lightsaber. So when you meet Ezra originally, he's got this little like kind of like stun gun almost. This okay. kind of like shoots out these little like electric balls. Uh-huh. That he's using when he's running around fighting with stormtroopers and stuff. Because again, because it is an animated series, there's not as much, quite as much death. Mm. People, are, people are so clearly Some dying, death. but there's a lot of it's off screen. Yeah, you know? I like, see. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. one of those things like you can, you can, you know, put, put a blaster bolt into a stormtrooper and kill them, and it's fine. No one cares. Uh-huh. You do it to a person, it's, yeah, it's you know, problematic. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. exactly. So, but anyway, he had so he had this little like weird kind of gun that almost kind of looks like a stapler, like a giant stapler mm-hmm, in a way, mm-hmm. and it shoots out little bolts. Well, then when he became an apprentice and was you know, asked to, to, to you know required to design his own lightsaber he still used that and just made the blade come out of that ah, but he could still use it as a gun as while a gun he was too. fighting as well that's pretty bad he eventually yeah. ended up losing that in a battle like it got destroyed and he built a new lightsaber that was mm-hmm. more of a traditional hilt mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. i always thought that was just a cool little toy that was actually my son miles his first lightsaber was that one because he found <laughs> that at disney world one year and he's like this is cool and i was like oh that's edra bridger's lightsaber yeah you're getting that <laughs> yeah. that's get sweet. that one get yeah. that one yeah. Yeah. All right, Marco, have you thought about this? Any any thoughts you have? I'm going to go. Now, I, I very much agree with Dean's statement. Like, that, the double-bladed lightsaber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everything up. Yeah. But just to be different, I'm going to have to go with Mace Windu's. Okay. Like, just because of the purple blade? Just because purple. Hilt, no, the hilt was a little bit different um, than everybody else. Yeah, and yeah. Yes, the purple blade was like... Yeah, yeah. Because I'm yep. Samuel L. Jackson, I'm gonna have a purple. Blade. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that you, we have never uh, seen anybody else wield a purple blade that I can no. think of since. No. Maybe yeah. it happened in some of the yellow, animated shows. Yellow, there's some know. yellow. Yeah. But. Yeah. Mm. but yeah, we've never really seen that ever since. Yeah. Um, which you know, I will say also, like I did, I did kind of like Ray's lightsaber at the end of mm. the Rise of Skywalker, mm-hmm. the yellow one that she has, where mm-hmm. she. Like does the little I guess because I like the whole like she kind of like rotates it a bit. Mm-hmm. It's like a little like she kind of flips the top and a little bit of a rotation ah, yeah, to ignite yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. it. I just thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. That's my big thing. Sometimes, sometimes what I think of the coolest part of a lightsaber is how it gets ignited. Yes, yeah, like you know, yeah, if yeah. it's just the standard like just press a button press or a switch, button. Yeah, that's yeah, a little yeah. dull. But if you've got yeah. some clever, interesting <laughs> way, to Kylo Ren's, it. it's like sputtering because he's so fueled with hate. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah. all right now let's finish up with what will potentially also get us some letters and notes i wanted everybody to give us your hottest spiciest or and or most controversial star wars opinion the kind of thing that will would make somebody in their basement somewhere going oh, i'm gonna tell yeah, these yeah, guys yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. so who, who <laughs> wants to start who's got a spicy opinion they want to throw out about star wars uh i didn't really think mace windu was like important <clears throat> Oh, okay. All right. As like a character. He All right. He was just on the Jedi Council and he just, it was Samuel L. Jackson, you know. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Not, mm-hmm. not, not like. When Samuel L. Like, Jackson shows up and says, I right. want to be in the movie He's playing He's going to have a part. You, you but do it. Right. Can- canonically, I feel like he was just, you know, adding fuel to the fire. Yeah, I mean, like he cut Anakin off Jango off. Fett's head and then he basically just got himself wasted by the, by an old man. Yeah. After nearly frying him to death already. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All right. I he just, was just providing agitated things for no reason. It's you know, like, this is not this isn't the mine. Pot. Actually, I'll save this because there's this wasn't mine, but I have something sort of similar to add to that, but I'll I'll wait for, in case someone else happens to throw this out there. Dean, oh. what do you got? What's your Well, so I had to go on like a Reddit feed and 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 see what <laughs> what, what other people's what controversial other people opinions are. Controversial, and I pulled out a couple of them. Okay. People take the movies way too seriously. Okay. That was one of the uh yeah. ones that got a lot of like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Midichlorians don't detract from the story or the mystery of the Force. Mm. Mm. Would you okay. like to comment on that? Uh, uh, we've talked about midichlorians before. And I've like, come around to it. Around I don't care. You don't care. I think it's more of, it was just to me, it was part and parcel of all of the stuff that I found wrong about the prequels in general. <laughs> 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 but I'm just like, all right, like, yeah, you know, yeah. you, you mm-hmm. threw this random ID in there. Yeah. Why not? You know? Okay. All right. So for you, it's in the basket. But I appreciate like, cause obviously, you know, it, it showed up in Mandalorian. It was mentioned in Mandalorian. And mm-hmm. it was one of those things like they mentioned it. And I was like, 
that didn't piss me off. By so it's not it. detracting from the story. For I, you. I guess not. I mean, okay. it's, I don't think it's necessary at all. Yeah. But whatever, it's or fine. The mystery of the force. No, whatever. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, that's just <laughs> no, it. I feel whatever. like even now when we talk about it, when they mention the Mandalorian, it's just used as kind of like a gauge. Like mm. it's just meant more of like, hey, hey, this is a gauge for how powerful someone is with the force. Well, you no, still don't really kept get it, it like force sensitive, right? Yeah. yeah. Force. You still don't really get it like mentioned as like little critters, which essentially is what it was kind of supposed to be. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or the amount that I you I think if have. they kept talking about that, if they kept talking about like little, as, as little critters oh, you, of sorts, yeah. beings, that would annoy me. Or like, you know, like a scale to, to your point. Like if they refer to it a, a million meter, or, you know, like right, some right. kind of meter, like yeah. you're not, no, you don't have enough. Yeah, I don't you want people like, you know, finger pricking or whatever, you know, all throughout the movie. He's like, go oh, check my midichlorian count. Oh, I'm low. Yeah, you know, drink some midichlorian uh, soda to get it back up again. Yes. Sponsored by Gatorade. Sponsored you don't have that much force. <laughs> yes. Cut the fourth wall. Like, I, don't, I don't need any of that stuff. Like, that's where uh, I would be like, all right, I'm done with this midichlorian crap. You know, uh, so you're you're thankful that they don't really keep... Yeah, yeah like okay. it's one of those things, like I feel like it was thrown in there in the prequels and everyone else has been kind of like, yeah. all right, fine, George Lucas made this part of canon, we'll use it if we have to, but we're not going to talk about it that much. <laughs> all right, so what are yours? Uh, so I got a couple oh, here. Oh, yeah. Marco, did you have one? Marco. Qui-Gon Jinn is the greatest Jedi ever. He is. Okay. He is. I don't know if that one's super controversial. No, but it's just an opinion. Wait, wait. Maybe. I mean, I guess like it depends on if, you know, who who you've decided is the greatest ever. And you might think, not think that he's. He was. He really was. Gosh, I didn't even like. Like calm and so good at his job. And he was very like, Mm. also like he was very anti-Jedi council. Yeah, he he was. was. He butted heads with them a lot. He was on his, he was on the outside looking in sometimes, you know, like especially you get into some of the. The other, you know, outside of canon stuff or, you know, extended universe stuff about him. Like there's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's a lot more you learn about him where you realize like and he was kind of he was a rebel. He was a bit of a rebel within the Jedi ranks. Oh, the separatists were right. That's another one. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe I feel that way. Well, again, I mean, okay. Um Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think he's talking yeah. I, mean, I like that one. I mean, it's like, you know, it's not quite the same as saying like the Empire was right, but again, to the point of the Jedi were a little too. They had their power. T- they they were a little too power hungry. They were, and, and not even in, not in the bad way, but in the they just you know like they felt like they knew what was right a little too much. I think. Mm, yeah. yeah. Mm. All right. So mine. First of all, adding on to what Sam had said earlier, I also think like, as we know it in the movies, Darth Maul was a completely unnecessary mm. and unimportant character <laughs> at all. Now, granted, has been what? built up quite well <laughs> in the, in the animated the stuff. Okay, I was if like, you're just looking at the movies, for folks who are just watching the movies, I'm sure it's like, okay, it's the guy with the horns and the red face and yep. cool battle, the double yep. lightsaber. Yep. But otherwise, was just one of the dumbest characters ever in the movies. In the context yes. of the movies, mm. yes. When you under when you get him back again, in he deserved the, better in the animated series. I feel like that was like them redeeming that character and be like, look. This was not just a cool looking character with a cool lightsaber, but there was a, there's a lot more you yeah, could yeah, do with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And I think they've redeemed him there. But from a movie perspective, he was an, as unnecessary to me as as Mace Windu was. True. So that was not my my big one. My two my two big ones. One, the prequels are irredeemable. Wait, what does that mean? Give me the context for the word. Everyone Sometimes words. Everyone are wants to try to think like as if we're oh. we're re- revisiting the prequels because of you know we brought Anakin into Obi Wan and we brought him into the Ahsoka series, and now it's okay again. The prequels are actually good. No, <laughs> are you not. saying you didn't like the prequels? No. Oh. And I, <laughs> damn. Look, oh, rude. We've established we've established before. Uh, your favorite Star Wars very much depends on when you were a child. <laughs> yeah, and watch whatever whatever Star Wars you grew up with. Yeah, is you're going to be your favorite. We at Gen Xers love the original trilogy the original because trilogy. we grew up with them for sure. You as a millennial love the prequels because you were very young when they came out. I was in my twenties. No. Yeah, you, we were in our twenties. Yeah. when the prequels came out. No, same no. with Marco. Like I'm, <laughs> no, Marco, no. you like the original trilogy best, right? I do, uh, but I do like the prequels. Okay. Oh, I'm right. not saying yeah. you, I, like I don't hate everything about them. But I do think there's a lot of, there's been a lot of like talk and a lot of think pieces about like, maybe the prequels weren't that bad. Look at all the stuff we get. I'm like, yeah, we got good stuff in spite of how bad they are. And here's my thing. It's not necessarily about, I don't think the prequels should never have happened. Mm -hmm. I don't think George Lucas should have had anything to do with it. Other than here's how the storyline I thought of was supposed to go. Someone else go write it, especially the freaking dialogue. Mm -hmm. Someone else go direct it. 
And maybe let's not dive so deep into all of the incredibly bad special effects that the world was just not quite <laughs> ready for. Yeah. A la uh, Attack of the Clones. Yes. Yeah. So I go back and I Gungans. watch those now. And I still, I st- uh, now get it, granted, Revenge of the Sith is still a higher tier than the other two by far. Mm. But those first two movies are just some awful movies. Well, Star Wars or not, they're awful you movies. You know, give us Ahsoka in the, in the live action. And yeah. you know, he, if, if Filoni had, had, had done this, he would have, he would have given it. Yeah. I just don't. Mm. I just don't think that. Like, I think George should have. It was one of those things where George Lucas came back and said, "You know what? I think I'm going to do. I see this Star Wars stuff is still pretty popular. Yeah. These books. Yeah. I'm going to go do some more movies. And you know, at the time, 20th Century Fox was like, "Here's a Brinks truck. Here's five Brinks trucks. We're going to back <laughs> them up. We're going to dump them out in your front yard. You do you." With no creative oversight whatsoever. Mm. And I think he needed to be reined in. And again, mm. we've talked about this before, too. I love George Lucas, obviously. Mm-hmm. I appreciate what the man has done. Mm. He has created a universe that's become one of the fundamental yep. Yep. parts of my pop culture identity. Mm-hmm. But I just don't think he is a... I don't think he's a great director. I don't think he's a great screenwriter. <laughs> like, the first Star Wars movie Roasted. has a little bit of that even, too. Like, you go back to The New Hope, and, like, you know, there's a lot of clunky dialogue A lot of clunky. It's yeah. a kind of a goofy movie yeah. at yeah. times. Oh, it's, for sure it's it is. It's great, but it's yeah. goofy. Yeah. The other two, like Empire and Return of the Jedi, work so well, mostly because other people were the ones writing mm-hmm. and directing those. Mm-hmm. So I just... I, I think that's maybe more of my beef with it. So, that, like, you can't go back and redeem those movies because they're still fundamentally bad. Mm. Now, I think we've done some amazing stuff around it. The fact that the Clone Wars cartoon is as phenomenal as it is and did such a great job at making Anakin a likable and interesting mm-hmm. character. Mm-hmm. Because in the movies, he's an awful character. Yeah. Yeah. From when he's an obnoxious little boy to mm-hmm. like the weird pouty teenager. Mm-hmm. And then you get the random heel turn that never really feels right. Mm-hmm. The Clone Wars cartoon does a great job making him more interesting. The stuff they've done since related to the prequels, fine. Still doesn't make them any better. That's my big hot take. <laughs> and then my only other one, which I kind of mentioned this before, is I think the future of Star Wars may never really include films again. Ah. I think they'll make some movies. Uh-huh. I don't think they're going to do well. Well. I think what we're getting right now, the mm-hmm. streaming era of Star mm-hmm. Wars and these mm-hmm. all little that's series and a going. lot of one-off stuff. Yeah, that's it. I feel like, and, and again, it goes back to, and I, I think I said this last year and I was mentioning it earlier, it is so hard to make a successful Star Wars film, I think, at this point, mm-hmm. that will bring in the masses, the floaters, mm-hmm. or even just the people that are like, I'm up for a good time at the movies to mm-hmm. see something that I don't otherwise care about. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you do that at this point. Mm. Unless, again, if you start building like stories completely off the grid and you somewhere would have else, to. Yeah. you'd have yeah, to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And maybe like Matthew Vaughn, the director, he's done a bunch of stuff like the Kingsman movies and a bunch of other things. He actually like was at some you know gathering or whatever, and they were asking about Star Wars, and he says, "Isn't it time we just reboot it? Mm. Just start all over again and redo all the movies originally again?" I'm like, "Nah, yeah. I'm not feeling that." Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so that's that's my two big spicy takes. Is <laughs> I agree with <laughs> that. prequels are irredeemable, and um, not you know, that one. I don't agree with that. one. I don't one. know about the. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about film. I know. I I films. know more about you than I feel like I did, and that's, I don't know how I feel about that's it. why oh, it's, that's yeah. why it's a spicy take. Like mm-hmm. a spicy take. Yep. All right. Yep. All right. That does it for us. We have rambled on our time here about Star Wars. Uh, it's time for us to unplug for the year, for yes. the episode. Yes. Thank you guys so much, as always, for joining us this season. We will be back next year. We've got some stuff already planned. But again, reach out to us. Let us know what you want to hear about on the show. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank yeah. you, Marco. Thank you, Sam. Dean, Marco, thank you yes, for being a great course. co-host. Absolutely. Doing this fun podcast with me week in, week out. Happy New Year, everybody. May the Force be with you. Second Big Podcast is brought to you by ELO. Are you looking to meet the needs of both hospitality and retail customers and their employees, as well as the busy on-the-go consumers? Wow. I mean, you should be. Well, me personally? Yeah. You yeah, you're no, breaking so the studio here? Yeah, <laughs> breaking mics and stuff like that. It's but a good anyway. thing this isn't on video right now. Yeah, it's, 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 Dean's it's. breaking up our studio here. I'm like, I know it's the end of the year, but come on, man. <laughs> Uh, The new ELO M60 Pay is a mobile POS computer designed to support everyday business. It's rugged, unlike our equipment here. This thing's awesome, yes. Uh, Enterprise grade, all-in-one device with a 6-inch HD touch display, Android 10 OS, Qualcomm Snapdragon 660 octa-core processor. I think it's something out of a James Bond movie. You're right.
right? And all Octa-core. the requisite connectivity options. Yeah, this thing's, this thing's pretty cool. All right, so what puts the M60 above other mobile computers for productivity is that it also offers integrated payment capabilities yes. to speed customers along wherever they are. The M60 is equipped for dip, tap, and swipe. Yes. Latest TikTok trend, right? <laughs> uh, so, which me- it means that it's a uh, except EMV cards with chips, NFC contactless payments for cards or mobile devices, and the traditional MagStripe cards, whoever still is out there. Yeah, still out there. Swiping Swiping, yes. You can kind of, every once in a while, you encounter some situation where someone's like, you got to swipe here, and you're like, what? Yeah, no, yeah. Well, actually, it's usually when the uh, device is not working. That's true. Like the chip part. Got to go old school. Contactless, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Perfect for table side service, line busting, curbside pickup, and anywhere your customers need to accept payments. So true. Honestly, I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. If I'm out shopping, if I'm out eating, Mm -hmm. someone brings one of these things to the table, Mm -hmm. like, hey, you can pay right here, right Mm -hmm. now with this. I'm like, I'm in. I'm a little cool factor. Yeah. I could have had a completely mediocre experience otherwise, but now I'm like, you just bumped yourself up a level with folks like me. Agreed. Uh, To learn more about this amazing device, check out the link in the show notes or contact the Blue Star Dealer team. Technic Podcast is also brought to you by Zebra. Dean, we're pretty big fans of wearables. We are. The pod, right? Absolutely. We love, our, we love our it. Smart watches. Got our smart watches. Wearable devices. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Uh, so why shouldn't the workforce devices also be wearable? Well, that's a great question. You know, don't they yeah. tote stuff around all day long They in don't your want hands? clunky things that, yeah, no. right? No. Introducing Zebra's most powerful and versatile wearable scanner, the RS6100. Mm. This small and practically weightless wearable scanner offers an advanced multi-focus scan engine in a rugged design you can use anywhere for warehouse aisles, freezers and coolers to the seat of a fork truck or out on the dock in the rain, snow, blazing summer heat or sub-zero winter that cold. Just about covers everything yeah. that I can imagine right yeah. there. Yeah. Lightweight, mm-hmm. take it anywhere, it doesn't matter. Yep, doesn't matter. Pair it with any Bluetooth-enabled device for cordless operation or connect to select Zebra mobile devices with a corded adapter to eliminate the need for batteries. Five interchangeable wearing styles ensure comfort for every worker. It's rugged, ready to use everywhere, and it's always in service with a swappable battery. Check out the link in the show notes to learn more and to find helpful sales resources.